He's on his way. Okay. Um, I mean, he's not um, coming from Florida, is he? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure where he's coming from. I think he's coming from where. I'll hang out a few more minutes. All right. Hopefully, he's here within the next 15, 20 minutes. Okay, then what we'll do then is we'll move on to our next order of business, and that's the exploratory hearing for Unicorn Motors with Mr. Carmichael and Mr. Sartre here to present their site plan. Now I have somewhere. So how many pages do we two? Just two. significantly and have put the building up for sale for an excessive amount. The existing building is in very bad condition. I have a copy for the board of a report that I did, an inspection report that I did a while ago uh, on the building which denotes all the, all the deficiencies with the buildings and all the problems. They are numerous. Um, I'm back. Okay. <coughs> Uh, among the problems with the building, structural cracks going through completely through the 8-inch masonry walls. Uh, there is rotted roof rafters. The roof leaks terribly. Um, there's a chimney that's basically falling off the building. Uh, and there are none of sort of maintenance problems. Bobby has owned the adjoining property at 402 Neighborhood Road for many years. It is a subject of this hearing and has been rezoned, been rezoned by the village board to industrial zoning. The property has been used for and has permits from the town of Brookhaven and the village of Mastic Beach for outdoor storage and a depot. I have copies of it. Uh, this project was bought before the planning board, which was the village board, and reviewed on December 11th of 2012. We were told to wait for a new zoning code was completed and then seek a change of zone. 
This project will require variance from the code of a lot area of 17,032 square feet instead of the required 20,000. This is a variance of 14.8 percent, which is which is slight. We're asked by the village board to conform to the downtown setback requirements for front yard, side yard, uh, so we, we would conform to the downtown development area. Because of this, we will also have to ask for variance from these requirements of the industrial district also. We have already applied to the zoning board for these items and are waiting for a hearing. Uh, we feel the construction of the new building and the abandonment of the existing building would greatly benefit the village due to the elimination of parking in the front yard, the elimination of garage doors on Neighborhood Road, landscaping, which will be on the new site, which there is none on the old site, um, and the new building will have a pleasing historic facade in the front of the village main road uh, the way it has been designed. Um, basically what you see before you is a proposal. Uh, we have followed the industrial zoning district to uh, the extent where we were able to. We put the uh, drawers on the rear of the building. We have a 20, uh, 20 foot buffer zone on against residential property on each side of the building, which is in conformance with the code. Uh, and the building has been designed with a pitch roof. It's designed with a facade that uh, the old the village board had deemed, uh, deemed was pleasing uh, for what they wanted to see on on uh, neighborhood road. Uh, this building ha has four bay doors, has a little office area, uh, and it has room for uh, the repair and the auto body. It does two phases, and there's also a um, the existing um, oven is going to be moved over to be in this building in a covered area. Uh, there's enough room for parking, and the rear is site is required by code, and um, the landscaping as is required and requested. Mr. Bruce, is there, is there anybody here, I mean, we're, we're, I'm sure we're going to get into a bunch of discussions about the plans that you have before us, but I, I'm curious, is anybody here who owns the place? I'm not yes, I own it. you want to it? Bobby Coleman, I'll come on. Bob, why don't you call that's it? Yeah, Bob. <coughs> Hey, good evening, sir. Have a seat. I'm just curious, uh, from a, I mean, before we zoom in and start doing a tight shot on, on the building plan and looking at the specifics of the mechanics of the building, I'm just more curious about coming out a little bit and talking for a moment about the, your neighbors and, the, and, the, and your business within the neighborhood. I, I have no problem with my neighbors. Okay. I don't, I can't recall off the top of my head what's on the other side of Madison. What residential structures might be facing? On Woodside. Oh, oh, Woodside. Oh, I'm sorry, on Woodside. Because mm -hmm. now that you've moved the, uh, the entrance, the primary entrance for the facility around to the back, so now people who, who live on, on Woodside, if there are any houses. Of course, right, the street is the ice cream store. That's okay. The ice cream store. So that's, that's, that's my first question. Mm -hmm. How many people do you employ? Uh, I had eight, now I got two. Okay, but you envision still only having two? When you start? No, I plan on building a back up again. Okay, and it's not, maybe you can help me with this, on the back, on the stand, on the uh, separation on the buffer, how many feet? It's 20 feet. That from the back? From the back of the parking area to the back of the property line is 20 feet. Okay. As there is on the side adjacent to, that is a residential lot, to the uh, to the east side of the property, that's also got a 20 foot buffer. Okay, so then you don't you don't anticipate any kind of uh, new problems on Woodside mm -hmm. with with trucks and cars going in down that street because it's just mm -hmm. a as a commercial property across the street from that. Yes. So that's good news. 20 feet. Um, <coughs> we'll, I'm sure we'll talk about that at greater length. What's going to be along there? But can you tell me just for a second because there's. I mean, this isn't the formal hearing. There's no resident, no residents here to talk about that. But I'm just trying to get my uh, my sense of the of, of your business nested within that part of Massive Beach. Because later on, it'll be explored more fully if anybody chooses to come from the you know from the surrounding uh, area. But for tonight, the only person who can really speak to it is you. And it sounds like you have a good relationship. You said with those uh, residents. Yes. All right. Okay, I appreciate that. That's all I really need to know, just to get my, so to get started. 
this just just for a little bit of information, which I believe you don't know. Bobby's been here, as I said, for 25 years, as the same use on the adjacent site. Uh, the adjacent site is about half the size of this site. Um, there are it is a non-conforming use. It's a legal pre-existing non-conforming <coughs> use at this time. Uh, the uh, change of use was granted for this piece, which we are discussing now. He has been always been here, same neighbors. There is a neighbor that's here. This is his existing facility. Is right here. Is right next to his neighbor here. The neighbor has no problems with him being there. He's been a good neighbor. Yeah, just philosophically, I'm always excited to hear that a businessman wants to reinvest in Mastic Beach. Probably live here too, I would imagine. Yes. So it's all, I mean, I, I, I just think that you're an existing businessman, you want to improve your business, and you want to do it here in Mastic Beach, and you live here too. So, I mean, I'm, I just come at this, I come at this from a, from a positive perspective. Do you, have, do you have a survey? I do have a survey, yes. And you're talking about an adjoining parcel that's confusing. Where is the adjoining parcel? The one you're currently on right now, just to the east. <coughs> that you know oh, currently. <coughs> I'm sorry, Daniel. You know, you know um, so that we can at least zoom down, look at the parcels, look at the area of photography, and everyone will have a better understanding of where we're all sitting. I do have the new zoning map, that helps. No, sure. Okay, you know what that one is. We'll just make it easier. Okay. 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 Well, that's the only CO on this site. Yes, that's correct. You know, pre previous business that had come in to talk, talk to us was up against uh, some real tight time windows with the bank, and, and everything was really compressed. And we worked with him as hard as we could, and still are, trying to make sure that he, he gets done with the planning board what he has to do and still be able to meet his requirements in time with the bank. And undoubtedly, you're getting ready to spend a lot of money here. Just can you tell me if uh, you are also under a tight time constraint with the bank, or do you have do you have more time? I'm not sure. I spent the whole year trying to do this already. Yeah. So the answer is yes. You're under yes. a tight time window. Okay. This survey is just showing this property. But you own this other property. No, I don't it's not true. He doesn't own the other property. Oh, He's know. only renting so what, the other property. Oh, so what's going to happen with that property? That's a pre-existing non-conforming use. It's so you're going, going to have to two. Do with you're going to have two. This would be a second. It's got nothing to do with this application. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just asking a question. Right. This would be a second uh, similar business on the next property. So there would be an old business here that's going to remain the same by whoever the owner of that property is, which has nothing to do with you guys at all, correct? That's correct. Okay, and you want to do a new business on this property here next to the old business. That's correct. And this is the property that the village board um, rezoned. That's correct. Just this one. Yes, Not sir. this one. Right. I'm sorry, which one are you? Well, the here? one with the unknown owner or the owner next door. The yes. adjacent property, which is 400 it, Neighborhood Road, is a pre-existing non-conforming uh, use. Uh, no, I'm saying, was it rezoned? No, it wasn't. Okay, so it's a non-conforming use. That's correct. And it's going to stay that way. And then this, you want to do a new business on. Oh, correct. Okay. No, because I have to... No, that's okay. You know, kind of under, because I'm looking at this, and this is a sizable building on this size property. Um, it, it has so. nothing else, you know, um, 
on it, the setbacks from the street are ten foot off the front off the front property feet. line. Right. Other than line. other than this front, uh, it's a minimum of ten feet. Yes, okay. it's a triangular piece of property on that roof. Okay, and it's a one-story building. Correct. I don't know whether we have got a. Um, a mandate, we'll call it, from the village board as to what kind of roof lines they want on these. From our other one, I don't know, did they ever come up to you with, I know we were saying No, and there's, 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 not, <clears throat> there's nothing in it called dictating. No, 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 it's, I know, it's <coughs> their the architectural design. design or anything. Okay, okay, so, whatever. Yeah, just uh, as an aside, Ernie, I think this gives us an opportunity in the future, both, both from, uh, you know, from the uh, building department and also code enforcement mm -hmm. and planning board for whatever happens on that lot that you're vacating, but you're right. pulling your business out. There's an opportunity in the future there for us to tackle that because I have heard uh, others, you know, prior to my time as a board member, I, just my, my, my fellow Mastic Beach residents have said there's room for improvement aesthetically on where you're currently, where you're currently situated. So when you move over here and building a beautiful new building, and it's all it's all on the plus column for the village right. of Mastic Beach. The only thing that's been done to the building I'm in is whatever I did to it. Yeah, I, I think it, it has like you say, it has you, possibilities for the future. You yeah. you ran the adjoining property for 25 years. Yeah, and that's the way it looked it for 25 years. Even though you well, were renting, I painted it. And you were renting. I did it. Okay. You know. Now yeah. when you're out of there, uh, you're going to come into a <coughs> new site. And have you applied to help the department yet? No. That was one of my questions. Yeah, this, these look, I'm sorry to interrupt, but they're uh, reasonably moving along, but they're still pre-limit. Because with health department, there would have been a, say, 50% expansion up front. Right. So that other pool right. might Well, push. typically, I don't apply to it until they get approved for site plan. Right, I got you. Or concurrent submittals, if these are a yeah. Or preliminary site plan, at least we know where the building's going to be. And to what size? You're intending to do auto body repair with a paint spray booth? Yes, yes, that's correct. And you're going to have a depot on here also? I have a depot now. On this property I'm talking about. How could you have a... With I've no had, building on the property? I've had it for years. On this property? Yes. This is the original one right here. Which is expired. Right. Right. I know. That's, that's expired why I was in 1995. That's when right. I originally started. And you've been using this property for a depot. I was using both sides. Even though it was expired, so there was no depot over here. No, that's so right. How, how did the village issue a permit for a vacant property that has no attachment to the adjoining property? Now it's a permit, it's not cc so that's a, I guess, a concern. Uh, my, my feeling would be, uh, where would the depot be? Where's the, you know, you'd have a, you'd have to have a dumpster, enclosure, and whatever. I don't know if it's, yeah, there a dumpster on there? Is that in there? Okay. Yeah. Yes. I couldn't yeah. see that far. Mm -hmm. And where would this depot be? The entire. Rear parking area would be the. the you can't depot. have both. You can't have both. You can't have parking at a depot. No, that would turn into a junkyard. Okay. Because you'd have bro you'd have, have broken up cars sitting in in, in in illegal parking places. These are parking stalls that are required for the right. building. I don't see how a depot could. A depot has certain criteria. And it has to be fenced, it has to be a certain size. It is fenced. Fence. It is well, fenced. That's, okay. It's well, been fenced for it? years. It's been fenced for years. Fence shows on the property all around the So all around there the is no is parking. Fenced. In other words, per this, there is no parking on this site. People are going to park in the street? Well, the only people that park here are having the cars repaired. That's what it is. It's well, no, no. You're supposed people to don't come and park here just to go to the building. Yeah, no, but that, I mean, to get there, where, where would people park? They're not going to park in the depot. Of, of course. 
The cars are going to be repaired. That's why they're coming with their car to the Well, it, the a product. towing depot is, I'm maybe getting confused, but a towing depot versus a <coughs> parking area are two different things. That's correct. A towing depot is where tow trucks bring mangled cars, used. and that's why the place next door looks the way it does, because you got banged up cars sitting there. Where are you referring to? The site over here. And if that, again, what happens when a car comes with a tow truck that's all smashed up? What happens with it? It goes in here. It goes in the yard behind the fence. In this, in here. Yeah. In the in the parking area. So this really isn't a parking area. It's a depot. Well, they do have a parking count on here that shows industrial. One space for every 600 square foot of building, so they have six spaces required. They are providing 13 spaces. All right. Yeah, but one -handed. again, then you'd have to so dictate on here what's parking, what's for. parking, and what's a right. depot. Okay. Well depot that's... has to be a certain size. It has to be individually, independently fenced. You know, from the parking area. I, I mean, I'm just saying I don't know where it is. Well, and the the building is taking up a goodly part. Of the, of the of the parcel, and I don't really see any parking for somebody who wants to come in to have an oil change. I guess that's you would do oil changes and repairs. Mm -hmm. So yes, I can see those kind of cars, but a depot is a whole different. And then you have a paint booth, a uh, 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 paint uh, paint booth, which is going to be requiring long term. You know, of vehicles being there. I, uh, where is the paint booth supposed to be in this area here? It's the, this is where the paint booth is. In this right, that's right. right. That's where. Yes. The paint okay, so that's long term. Spray when, booth? Well, no, no, no. When you bring it in a car and you're repairing it and painting it and and auto body repair. Well, that's what the building is for. The car would go into the building. The auto body repair would be done. Then it would go into the spray booth, spray it would be painted, okay. and then the car and, would be And in the, in the meantime, the remainder area has all these other vehicles. Are you going to turn vehicles away when you have more than so many in there and you know, there would be parking? But he doesn't expect to have more than seven as a depot at any time. I, I don't know. I mean, he doesn't expect it. Are you going to have uh, outdoor storage? You, you don't have outdoor storage? Yes. You do? Yes. Okay. Outdoor storage you would need a separate permit for. We have a, it already has a permit for that. For That's an outdoor storage and depot. That's already allowed on this site. I can't see how that <coughs> was even Personally, I can't see how that, on a vacant piece of property. Well, that, you okay, got the, I know. You got the permit right there. I well, I, 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 I see it, but I, I question it. You can't issue something like that on a vacant piece of property, as far as I know. Well, it's you have it, so. Well, yeah. Does it say where it is? It yeah. says a tax map number. Yeah. The whole property is it? Correct. Is the whole property. The whole property at this okay, time. Okay, so then you can't have a building on it then, with according to this permit. Okay. I'm sorry. Well, I, I, uh, I, 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 I. You're asking I understand, ridiculous. I understand. Things. Your okay. concern here, Ernie, but I think what we need to do is focus on this piece of property right. and let's look at it as a blank piece of property. And right, that's exactly what I'm exactly. saying. So what is required? What? Right. So we're going to address what needs to be done to this piece of property for this building to fit, and what's going to be required for him to store vehicles on it and make sure he has the adequate property. Well, that's why if, it, if it comes down to he can only store four or five vehicles on the property, and that's that, that's he's only going to be able to store four if, or five if, vehicles. If on a the restriction property. of that sort were put on the property, could you live with that? Well, a thought. If if no, I understand your thought, but <coughs> if that's what's the what, that's what space is available then he's going to have to live within those confines. Okay. And, what, and, and if it goes beyond that, then it's going to be up to code enforcement to... And, and what's the definition of outdoor storage? Well, is it going to be motors laying on the ground? 
uh, reminiscent of next door. Uh, broken parts, parts of vehicles, are they going to be put in those stalls? See, and before you, well, before you use a term like ridiculous questions, just keep in mind that we're here to represent the citizens of Master Beach who are not here tonight and who have actually gotten a little bit annoyed at times by the look of the current property. So now we have a great opportunity, I think, it's a great opportunity here to make this thing really be a shining, a shining uh, business on Naples Road. But his point earlier about what happens to the, the okay, I think there's opportunity there later on for something else. But I think any, any question that you might think is stupid is a great opportunity for us to explore, being as an exploratory hearing in the first place. So I'd ask you. My, my comment was only regarding that we have a permit on the yard and that he doesn't understand how there is one. I got it. That was a stupid comment. Mm -hmm. It is. It, that, that's one man's opinion, I suppose. But I'm here to also represent the people who don't get a chance to I hear understand something. that. that you and we're open to anybody's suggestions. Right. But I, I just, words mean things. You know, I, I get a little sensitive because we're, we're doing our best here to try and facilitate this gentleman's effort. Because so like I said when I first started, I think he's doing a good thing for Mastic Beach. All right? But let us, let us explore it in the way we need to explore it. Thank you. Anyhow, I'm not the expert on buildings, so I'm going to let you. Now this is pretty preliminary. Yeah, as we were saying before, it's pretty preliminary. I do see one of the things, and I guess building department will handle once the building elements go in, but silver metal roofing, that's metal standing seam roof, yes. I'm assuming, right? Yes. And the building itself, code compliance, yes. mechanical code, ventilation, uh, auto body shop with all of the discharge or anything else that's going to yes. be emitted from the roof, things that are going to be shown on here as far as um, uh, discharge piping. Chimney yes. areas, things like that. This is this is considered a, a single story, all slab. Right? That's correct. Okay, so those plans will follow That's uh, correct. later on. So you're you're just trying to get this pre in here to understand whether it's feasible right. or not. This is right? site plan approval. Gotcha. Right. The chimney fence is it just a completely open chimney fence, or is no. it got slats in it's it? It's got slats in it. Okay, I do see one of the parking lots laid out where there's seven parking lots on the westerly side, and one is laid out right next to where one of the intended uh, bays are to open. It's right up against the building. Okay. It's a Fair enough. Odd. You know, yes. It doesn't work well either. I guess the the bay would go, or the no. parking would be the laid out parking would go. Oh, so there would be one less, yes. All right, and just back to the other question earlier, just for, because you know this will come up with health ball, 50% expansion. Where do you think sanitary would work? That they would sanitary will go in the front yard. Okay, well, I, I don't know. Village is anticipating sewers, so that the reason for the wasteland to come out to the front of the building. Oh yeah, they're they're going to want to see it out front anyway. Right. But to for, to get approvals now, you're going to have need that septic tank. That well, there is room for expansion. I did a drawing. Fifty percent expansion. expansion. Yes. I don't know if you can fit that anywhere. You no, know, you'll have to uh, bring that up. Yeah where you can actually fit that. I, I don't really see anything left that would work with the property lines. Because you need eight feet from the pool, the, the proposed pool, pools, pool and, five and then five foot off the property Five foot lines. from the property right. Five it's foot tight. from the building. It's tight. Yeah. See what you can do with the configuration. We wanted it up front. There are <coughs> other places, but we wanted to be able to tie it into a future. future. So totally, totally understand. It's just a, it's a now thing with health department. You know, what they get in, that's right. what they're going to be able they to do for you. Yes, they were required. Right. What do you envision for uh, outside light? Uh, there's a lighting detail in the site plan. It's a shielded downlight combined with dark skies code. The front of the building had some decorative lights, fixtures, some um, old fashioned type decorative lights. One of the comments by the village board when we appeared before them last year that they wanted to see some, some uh, nice street lighting. That would be consistent with the pole lights that are already there. Uh, the rear has two, I believe it's two, um, wall-mounted lights. And signage? Is that on here as well? Signage is not on here no. What do you envision for the uh, signage? Uh, just a small sign over the front entry. Over the front door, <coughs> in the front, just a small sign that says Unicorn Motors. With the, uh, one of the things I'm very much in terms of is the, uh, the street address on that corner on the top. So Must be. Right. Fire department requires it. So. 
I saw our other other site when they used the Yeah, I think it's six inch high. Yeah, you know what I like about it? What I like about you all your plan is that you have the entire front that faces Neighborhood Road really encompassing the building. So everything that happens happens in the back. Yeah, that's correct. You know, so I think that's I like what you what you're doing with the fencing, making it so you can't see right through it. Um, I, you know, I'm glad to hear that that you have commercial property across the street there so that it's not having a big impact on, on the residential traffic. And I like that you have a 20-foot standoff. What kind of plantings did you put, did you intend to put in the back there? Uh, Arborvitaes, any kind of uh, evergreen that would be there all year round. There's a planting schedule on there. Yep, I'm seeing it now. All right. I'm looking forward to doing a site visit. But uh, when it's convenient, maybe we can actually get a chance to talk to one of you gentlemen on the site, there's a quick look at it. Sure, let me watch this stuff there. Great, great. Well, I think this is going to really look a hell of a lot better facing Neighborhood Road than the, than the current arrangement. Well, the doors in the front are painted that too. Yeah. I'm trying to back out well, the traffic out. and... But, you know, we are sensitive to traffic. Yes. I mean, because Neighborhood Road is already tight. And, and there's... If good Lord willing, the original rise, there'll be more businesses looking to build on the neighborhood, but creditable businesses like what you're, what you're showing us here. So it'll only get worse. It'll only get worse as time goes on. The consideration in design of the building was the fact that we're on neighborhood road, and neighborhood road is the main road within the village. And it doesn't need garage doors facing the street, and it doesn't need traffic trying to back out into the road. So uh, we wanted to comply with what the intended future vision of the village will be. And just a question getting back to the depot thing, because I think those are going to be two conflicting <coughs> situations. Uh, when you speak of depot, are you speaking of, I bring my car there for an oil change or repair, and it, you know, it sits there for why you, until you bring it in? Or are you talking about Tow trucks bringing in uh, I have, damage. I have, I have my own tow truck. I'm done. I have my own truck. Okay.